Hello there, Refuge family, and welcome to Refuge Daily on this thankful Thursday. Uh, another day to be thankful in the Lord. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to be rejoicing and be glad in, glad in it and just give thanks to Him for all things. One of my favorite times is, is Thanksgiving, and that's not right now. We're actually at a time where we're getting close to what we celebrate as Easter or Resurrection Sunday is what I like to refer to it. Uh, reminds me of the resurrection and, and the beauty of of that and how important that is for us to uh, to remember the resurrection. Uh, be talking a little bit about communion today because uh, that's a time when we do that. As you know, uh, as Christians, we um, will oftentimes get together, uh, although it's not necessary to be um, getting together with other Christians to do communion. Uh, but it's it is a time that we oftentimes do get together where whether we're in church in a congregation or perhaps off in a separate uh, area with a, a, a few other Christians and celebrating uh, the resurrection, the death and the resurrection. Of course, when we think of Jesus going to the cross that died for our sins and has taken away the sins of the world for all those who would have faith in and believe in him and in his death and resurrection and uh, that's you and me so that's that's the beauty of it and that's what one of the things that makes me so thankful on a daily basis so and i consider that um I, I think it's important to be thankful uh you know the bible is filled with commands that to give thanks to god we see it in uh, psalm 106 107 118 um, in First Chronicles, uh, as well as First Thessalonians, there, there are uh, many verses that, that list the reasons why we should be thankful as well. Um, and one of them is that um, in, in Psalm 136, his love endures forever. Enduring love that goes on forever is something that certainly uh, is worth being thankful for. And that love is not just a love. It's a love for you. It's a love for me. Um, uh, it's a love for the world because he loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son um, that who would ever um, believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And that's what we get. So another reason to be thankful, right? Um, and he is good. Uh, in Psalm 118, his, uh, we see his mercy is everlasting. Um, that's, that's something that uh, I'm so grateful for, his mercy. Uh, his grace, his mercy, uh, I think I talked about that a little bit the last time I was sharing with you. Um, but thanksgiving and praise always goes together in my mind. I think that um, you know we can't adequately uh, praise and worship God with also, without being also thankful. Um, it's hard to be uh, ungrateful or um, bitter about something and then go praise the Lord, I'm sure. Um, I, I probably have gone into a worship service with some bitterness in my heart, and, and it was not easy. So there was a time to get rid of that, and uh, and so that was uh, um, that was necessary in order for me to adequately uh, and 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 in spirit and in truth uh, to give praise and worship to the Lord. So Thanksgiving is something that is is a beautiful thing and uh, something that I am. Uh, certainly grateful for on this Thursday, uh, thankful Thursday, I call it, I'll be calling it, um, to the communion. Uh, communion is something that I just want to touch on. I'll make it fairly brief, but communion is such a beautiful time of remembrance uh, of what Jesus has done for us, what God has done for us through his son, Jesus. And Jesus took the suffering on the cross so that we could be uh, freed from the sin that uh, we were uh, that was imputed to us when we were born. So when we came into this world um, because of what had happened in the garden. But what a beautiful time um, communion can be and and is. Uh, there's many ways to uh, celebrate that communion, and and perhaps you've experienced many different ways. Uh, if you've ever been part of other denominations, uh, there, there's a there's a tradition in many in many ways that things are done differently. Um, but I like the simplicity of it when we consider uh, not getting too wrapped up in the elements necessarily. That what we consider the symbol of the bread and the wine that was shared at the Last Supper, um, or what we call the Last Supper with Jesus and his disciples. 
Um, but just making it simple, uh, something we can do even in our own home. And I certainly would well, like to encourage you to do this in your own home. Uh, it may seem awkward for some and maybe not so much at all for others. And maybe it's a common practice, and I hope it is for many families particularly. But you could do it individually in your own uh, time, in your own space. Um, you can have communion with the Lord. Uh, that's essentially what it is, communing with the Lord, being there at one, and, and also remembering and being thankful for what he did for us. So I like to uh, take communion corporate in, uh, corporately with other people, uh, certainly the body of Christ when we get together. I really, truly enjoy that. There's a beauty in that without question. I like to do it individually. I'll do it by myself at times. Well, really, I'm never by myself when I'm doing it. I'm communing with God. So Jesus is right there with me. His Holy Spirit lives in me and in you. And so uh, we're never really alone when we do that. Uh, we're actually communing directly with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit when we do when we go into that remembrance and celebration. Um, but it, it doesn't have to be about the elements, and that's an important thing to remember, I think, uh, for us to remember. Uh, I even will do it with uh, a little bit of... Um, super fruit punch if necessary uh I, I don't i don't have to go and make sure that it's a certain type of grape juice or certainly i don't use wine uh, any longer it's been many years um and it wasn't for the purpose of communion but it, 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 in this case with organic super fruit punch i don't think that that's dishonoring the lord in any way shape or form as a representation of his blood because it, his blood truly has a super punch to it uh, without question, uh, what it has done for us is, is something that nothing else could do. Uh, bread could be just simple crackers. It doesn't even have to be a, a type of bread. Uh, we happen to use different types, uh, and, and certainly an unleavened bread is something that was common practice um, many, many years ago. But any old bread will do if you have some, or crackers, uh, those kind of things. So I just want to encourage you today on this thankful Thursday. Maybe it's a time that you, if the Lord puts it on your heart, you might go home with your family or you uh, are in at home with your family already, uh, whether it be one, two, or three other people. Uh, the believers in Christ get together to celebrate the, the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior uh, in communion, I think is just a beautiful thing that uh, would honor Him. And it's a form of worship that I believe that He uh, just smiles down upon us when, we, when we're doing that. So um, I, I want to encourage you to do that. Uh, look for an opportunity. Pray about it. Uh, there's there's many scriptures that point to it uh, in, in all of the Gospels, actually. The accounts of the Last Supper are found in uh, Matthew chapter 26, um, Mark 14, uh, Luke 22, and John 13. And of course, Paul even talked about it in 1 Corinthians. And you can look at 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, and you'll see where Paul uh, really uh, gives us a, a good account of the uh, the, the communion and the, and the time that the Lord uh, broke the bread and the wine and took the wine um, as as a uh, as a symbol of the new covenant. So encouraging you to do it. Uh, thanks for tuning in today to Refuge Daily on this thankful Thursday, and uh, may God bless you and your day.